Welcome. Come on down. This is the space. This studio is a culmination of nine years of building in the making. And throughout those nine years, I've chased after multiple different careers. I've taken old YouTube stuff, old recording studio stuff, from a musician to a audio technician to uh, owning my own record label to wanting to be a videographer and finally landing on making gaming content. In order for a space to really be a creative space, you have to have a little bit of mess. I've spent a lot of money and even more time turning my studio into a creative space where my mind has the tools that it needs to create the things that I need to create. And to me, that's what a personal studio should be, a place where the mind isn't inhibited by the tools it has available. I'm Harris Seller, and this is my creative space. This, uh, First room is the main room where I pretty much do about everything. The first thing you'll probably notice is that there are two desks in here. This is kind of my main desk that you usually see me at. It's uh, usually see it in the videos. It's the streaming desk. You see both PCs down there. One on the left is the gaming PC, the right one's the streaming PC. Got the cameras and the microphones, I'll, I'll point it all out to you in a little bit. And this one is the editing desk. So this is where I edit all my YouTube videos. We've got the monitors for if I'm editing music. We've got the uh, ultra wide monitor here, which is great for timeline edits when you're editing videos. The special addition to these tables lately, these desks lately is uh, that's really fun. Oh no. And that's uh, broken. Did <laughs> that just break? No, just the plastic came off. <laughs> this thing was really cheap. I reached out to flex a spot for these desks after I had a back injury about a month ago and I'm not able to sit for longer than 30 minutes to an hour without risking injury. And so flex a spot sent me two sets of legs. So both of these desks are motorized with manual controls and then preset heights, which is really great. Switching over to standing desks was uh, the latest project that I had in this studio, and it was one that I needed to do because of an injury. I was planning on purchasing one fancy desk, and I was finding a bunch of desks for like $2,000 that were motorized and standing, and uh, I was really fortunate enough to have Flexus Spot actually email me right when this happened when I was looking and about to pull the trigger on a $2,000 desk and they sent me two sets of legs that are actually only $300 each and they're amazing. I am of the mindset that uh, in order for a space to really be a creative space, you have to have a little bit of mess. You're always back and forth between projects. You're always trying new things and uh, it's nice to have all the stuff that you're working on out in the open and so my uh, my wife very much disagrees with that statement, but I like I like just a little bit of controlled mess in my creative space. Over here are my guitars. We got the acoustics. We got uh, some gifts, Christmas gifts. This is a high school Schecter of mine. We got the Guitar Hero controllers for when we're streaming Guitar Hero. Most of the guitars over there don't actually get used. They're more just kind of a memorabilia for me to see where I've started and to see where I've become now. Also, I, it's important to me that when people see me play guitar, they can see that I'm a genuine musician and that I've been playing guitar for a long time and I've accumulated all these beautiful pieces of, of musical instruments. And they, they show a lot of background about who I am. These two are my two guitars that I'll need at any given moment on a stream. You got a Fender, their new player series Stratocaster, with the Floyd Rose, and of course, the Game of Thrones, the Game of Thrones guitar strap. Every guitarist needs a solid strap. It's like the one place where you can really like show your personality is the guitar strap. I love cool guitar straps. All my guitar straps are made by a little local company here in Utah, actually. And then this is the other one. This is my Schecter, my current Schecter that I use. It's got a uh, also a Floyd Rose on it and a Sustaniac pickup. I love this thing. It's so pretty. I think I've had it like 10, 9, 10 years now. 
But because they're both Floyd rows, so they're difficult to tune, uh, I keep them both next to me because this one's standard tuning. This one's drop D tuning. If I ever need to switch back and forth, I got them both ready. And the amp here is the second half of the musical wonder piece. I built this amp when I was really getting into music on YouTube and I thought I was gonna be a YouTube guitarist making guitar covers. And right about the time that I finished this amp, music just died on YouTube. I mean, you don't see any music on YouTube anymore unless it's mainstream music because it's so against the algorithm. And so I kind of repurposed a lot of it to fit with a live stream with the direct out, everything to make it so that it could be fully used for a live stream and sound amazing. I, I built it out of an Ikea side table, by the way, bedside table. The top half is a Mesa Boogie head that I had custom, uh, the front custom CNC'd to mount in here. Had a friend do that on campus. That face plate that was custom CNC. Fortunately for me, that was actually free. <laughs> a friend of mine who was in the, the a metal shop class at the local university, um, he did that project with me. It took like two days, and then I took him out to dinner afterwards. And so that was I lucked out with that. <laughs> the bottom half is really cool. It's a cab simulator, so it emulates the sound of a, of a speaker and then it sends it as a direct output over to my setup over here so I can either turn on these speakers or I just can record it directly and because we have neighbors and shared walls it doesn't make any I can put on my headphones and it doesn't make any noise also I can just feed it directly into the stream so the stream hears it rather than it playing out of speakers and picking up in my mic so they hear like that raw crisp it's a really cool setup I'm able to integrate it directly into everything because of the way I built it that amp head is over a grand. That load box cab simulator, the bottom half right below the lights is $2,000. I probably would have stuck with uh, just a simple guitar effect simulator like an 11 rack and just had that be the only thing in there because you can get some decent sound out of that. And you get a little more variety. When you get an amp head like that, you're kind of stuck with the one sound. And I probably could have saved myself like $4,000 and gotten almost as good of a sound. This is where the majority of everything, this has been like nine years of accruing equipment. Everything has been put into this. As I've built the stream setup, I've taken old YouTube stuff, old recording studio stuff. Uh, when I first started building my very first studio, like nine years ago, this was my initial investment is my Blue Kiwi microphone. I picked up the Blue Kiwi because I was very inspired by a couple other YouTubers. One in particular was Tyler Ward and he used the Blue Kiwi. And so it was kind of like, a, I didn't know a lot about microphones, but I knew someone who was doing what I was doing had this microphone. And so I bought that one. If I if I would go back, I'd probably I'd probably cut down and, and shave half the cost off of that and get, uh, you know, like a thousand dollar microphone or something. If, if I was going back again, if I was trying to be a, a record uh, building a recording studio you need a nice microphone but that was probably a little overkill we got the two cameras over here we got the the Canon 5d mark 4 which again is overkill but that was my first like professional YouTube camera that I used for YouTube videos for a long time the second one over here is empty because it's the one um, it's this one right here, it's the Canon EOS R. The two cameras are probably the two most expensive things of my setup that I have absolutely no regrets about at all. I use my cameras every day. I use them for massive projects, filming campaign videos for United States Senators. I've used them for every one of my YouTube videos. I use them in my live streams. I have definitely, those are the two that I've definitely gotten the most return for my dollar for. And if I could go back because of what I do, I'd absolutely do it again. There's something about getting a beautiful shot that still excites me more than anything else in the world. And I use two different cameras because one of them's got a very narrow field of view with that shallow depth of field for when I'm playing the game. And then this one is the super wide one that I use for my intermission screen. And it's that contrast between the two looks is one of my favorite things. Also, I had to figure out what to do when I got this standing desk. Because as the desk goes down, you can see the camera doesn't. <laughs> so I had to mount the second camera to the desk so when I'm sitting I use this one for the gameplay and I use this one only and then when I'm standing up I can use both cameras but that was um, a little bit of a chore to figure out what I wanted to do there. Some other pieces of equipment that I'm a huge fan of here we got um, we got the Go XLR which is a high quality mic interface it's it's incredible. Uh, the other setups of my audio interface are I've got the Astro Mix Amp, 
that goes directly to my gaming PC so I can, you know, if my uh, teammates are being annoyingly loud, I can just crank them down and only hear the game sound. And then of course I've got the Steel Series headset with the, uh, the it's the Arctis Pros, the wireless. So again, I can not only play guitar wirelessly, but I can also just, I don't know, do that on stream, I guess. I, I, love, I love being wireless on stream, that's huge to me. I love my Elgato Stream Deck, it's fantastic. Got the Nintendo Switch over here, colored by Colorware. And of course, two monitors on the streaming PC, one monitor on the gaming PC. These two are just 1080p 60 hertz. This is uh, 1440p 144 hertz. Game changer when I got that. It's like you're playing a totally different game. And then the two PCs down there, the one on the left is uh, just a pre-built one from iBuyPower. So the streaming PC was actually a lot more expensive, mostly because of the capture card built into it. I, I was my first PC I ever built. Um, I think I probably made a mistake on the motherboard and CPU. If I had gone with someone who knew a little bit more about it, I probably could have saved some money and gotten more power out of it if I'd known more about like CPU sockets and, and things like that. But building that PC took me an entire day. And the thing's a beast, it's amazing. After I did that, I never wanted to build another PC again. And so I decided my gaming PC, I was just going to buy. <laughs> Looking back, if I were to get two PCs from scratch again, I definitely would have uh, built both of them to save, you save a good chunk of money building it yourself. And um, I probably would have gone with some different components for the streaming PC and saved some money on that. But overall, it's an amazing setup and it's uh, it allows me to do some things on Twitch that nobody else is able to do, like with the quad capture card and just the beefy streaming PC on its own. It takes all the self-control in the world not to update those PCs, because I, I want to, but I really don't have to. If I could, I would go out and drop another couple grand on just PC components. So obviously we have camera one, camera two, and then up here is camera three. This little guy. It's, the contrast is hilarious. I've got, you know, this this camera and, and lens is, what, over $5,000, $6,000. This thing is $50. <laughs> My stream is full of things that are of two different cost brackets. I have stuff that's incredibly expensive, and then I have stuff that is literally the cheapest thing I could find. And there's usually nothing in between. It's one or the other. One tool that every streamer needs and then a lot of streamers forget. This is very important. You need a trash can next to your desk, always. Every streamer has snacks, every streamer has drinks. <laughs> the kind of mess that accrues without a trash can is atrocious. You need one of those. This is another project I've been working on for a while. I've got, uh, let me grab this. We got uh, an Oculus Rift I've been meaning to set up on stream. I uh, wanted to turn this entire wall into a green screen and get some really high-end uh, VR streams going for like Beat Saber and stuff. Um, I'm kind of, I'm kind of a Beat Saber. What's the word I'm looking for? Savant. <laughs> I was trying to avoid the word savant. <laughs> Being a musician and everything in, um, in previous internet career, I'm, I'm decent at Beat Saber. But yeah, um, this is kind of nice because it's obviously the entry to the second room here. But um, when I'm ready to use it, I can, uh, continue to hang this up and it's it's all it doesn't work right now but push this over here and make the entire wall a green screen so I can get to I, I haven't finished setting that one up yet but that'll be in the next the next studio tour that'll all be nice and set up this is a nice addition to the setup super comfy gaming chair I appreciate clutch chairs for sending that over to me for a video I made for them a while back um, Got two of them, got one in the other room, but uh, they just take up so much space <laughs> and I only need one. Lights are something that um, you can save a lot of money on. I mean, these LED panels are amazing and they were like 60 bucks each. When you can go up to, I mean, you can get thousand dollar lights. There's just no reason to do it. As long as you're well lit, they, they do an incredible job and they're so small. I love how fancy and, and tiny LED panels are versus something like this. It's just a just a beast. I mean, I still use it. They're great. They serve their purpose, but uh, I, I really love the tiny LED panels. And yeah, and I'm sure you've noticed making this space a fun place to be. I like throwing a bunch of decorations places. Some of my favorite animes, favorite TV shows. Uh, stuff that people have sent to me. Just, just things to 
just make sure I, you know, you gotta enjoy. I'm, I'm in here the majority of the day. I really don't ever go outside, so I need to make sure I enjoy being here. But let's uh, take a quick jump over to the other room. This is a work in progress. This is very, very bad. This is not... This is my least favorite room in the whole house. This is everybody's least favorite room in the whole house. This is, um, I'm in the process. This used to be a guest bedroom. And then we um, somehow grew an extra room in this place. I feel like I need to give some explanation, but that's boring, so I won't. But and this room opened up and I have been allowed to turn this into a film space. It just hasn't been turned into that yet. <laughs> we got this nice little room. We've done a couple podcasts over here before we threw a bunch of junk down here. Um, and uh, the problem with this room is that, again, we rent this place, so we're not allowed to paint the walls, and the walls are skin colored. <laughs> They're the same color as my skin, so if I sit in front of it and try to color correct my face, it color corrects the entire image. And it's just, it looks terrible. I need, I wish I could repaint this wall like eggshell color. This, the color of the ceiling would be just fine. But anyway, we can't repaint this room. So I think I might like have to build a second wall like in front of this one, get like some cheap drywall and some two by fours and just build a fake wall in front of it that I can paint. But I haven't done that yet. And we're talking about, we're, we're considering buying a house soon. So it's just kind of, I've kind of let go of this room for now. And anyway, let's go back into the other room. This is such a bad room. And um, that's pretty much it. It's a giant work in progress. There's, it's never finished. And that's the best part about this is there's always something new I wanna do. There's always something I wanna try. I'm always trying to push the envelope and see, you know, what, what else could I add to the stream that no one else is doing? So it's a very fun, it's a very fun project, and I've I've loved uh, I've loved my space. But uh, that's what it's looking like in 2019, and uh, hopefully in 2020 I've got something more exciting to show you. See you later, guys. Oh my gosh! How long have you been there? <laughs> like two seconds. What's the matter with you? I'm, how is it? Am I supposed to come yeah, like tap me on the shoulder. I don't know. I thought you were 